Hello all. Looking at the responses we received on the video where we discussed about the job descriptions from Mahindra Rice and Ather, we've now planned to make this as a video series. On that note, I found another interesting job description provided by Ather, about which I thought we'll have to discuss more in detail. Here, if you see, there is this opening for mechanical systems engineer. This mechanical systems engineer doesn't sound like a job opening for a design engineer, but still. a design engineer or a development engineer this is going to be a very suitable role from the recent experiences when i looked at this job description it was really really detailed and it explained really well about what would be your role on different phases of the life cycle of the product this was quite interesting for me and then i thought we will have to definitely discuss about this so as a mechanical system engineer what is expected from you is on different situations say for example on the concept phase you will have to be having the understanding of product specification and translate that to vehicle level specification what is this see product specification is nothing but okay uh, the wheel size is say for example 12 inches how is this 12 inches going to translate to the vehicle level specification how am i going to do this this might be a very lame example but this is how you should start thinking so what are you going to do during a concept phase and what are you going to do on the development phase that is what is given as a responsibility here as a responsible mechanical systems engineer you will be responsible in doing vehicle architecture based on static and dynamic packaging studies what does this mean this involves a little of the physics whatever we learned during our university days where you will have to know Uh, how are you going to pack the components since it is ether we are going to talk about electric scooters here again you are going to talk about a lot of architecture packaging multiple components bill of material specifications and as usual you will have to start all these activities with benchmarking at vehicle level when we say benchmarking at vehicle level you compare your product with a similar product there is always this apple to apple comparison you cannot compare an ether scooter with hero honda karishma say for example so on that note if you take this eighth scooter you will have to compare it or benchmark it with another electric scooter people generally do this to understand what the competitors have as a positive feature or what you have as a negative feature because every vehicle generally gets into this uh, development phase where they go for detailed surveys with the market where people will tend to give a lot of feedbacks or a lot of informations about how the vehicle is performing how does it look etc and etc with this voice of customers generally any oem would improve their product level once in 3 years let us compare this scenario with uh, suzuki swift the very first generation of swift had a totally different look and now even though it looks similar there is a lot of improvement on suzuki swift right nobody will disagree to this point that is how you start doing benchmarking you you compare your product with an equivalent product what is available in the market and then during the development phase you will have to manage the vehicle level specification through the development phase so what are you going to give in your product what is going to be the feature what an end user will experience right and if you have Uh, experiences on integrating the electrical and the mechanical components then that becomes an added advantage where does this work so when you develop an electric motor motor for these wheels motor for these scooters that is an electrical mechanical integration right and overseeing the vehicle weight weight related attributes such as cg center of gravity sag of the vehicle how does this work right and of course without gdnt there is no engineering behind so you will have to also talk you will have to consider gdnt principles and vehicle trim what is this vehicle trim seat cover is a vehicle trim right the partial shelf what you have in front of the scooter is a vehicle trim meaning you will have to know how to design a plastic component if it is going to be the frames you will have to know how to develop a sheet metal component or a steel component right so and again design for assembly design for services what is design for services this could be considered on two aspect how can a production person assemble this product what is his serviceable area what is his or her serviceable area that is design for serviceability design for assembly is how am i going to assemble this component 
similarly when you when the product is already in the market if there is something to be changed on the product because of some mistake how easy is it for you to change the product right and that is designed for serviceability meaning uh, and again if you have some knowledge on this durability nvh fit and finish ergonomics then you are a very suitable engineer to get into this you cannot miss out dfmea you cannot miss out dfm dfa etc and etc and whenever there is a concern if you are able to perform a root cause analysis for this component or for the concern to identify the possible root causes say there are there are many possible ways for you to do a root cause analysis it could be a fish bone diagram it could be a 5y analysis right so if you have exposure on this 5y or fish bone you again become a probable applicant for this particular role and on the production phase again it is rca ctq right so now if you see these are all the activities what you are going to perform meaning from the design till the development you will be working on right you are going to work on the complete life cycle of the product which is a dream come true moment for a mechanical engineer you start the design you will benchmark and add features or remove features you will work on the concept of it you will develop suppliers you will start producing so you are working on the complete phase starting from the concept phase development phase and production phase right this is again i wanted to mention that it is a dream come true moment for a design engineer what is their expectation for this kind of job description it is minimum needed for you to have some understanding two wheeler vehicle architecture and sub systems what is vehicle architecture and what are sub systems sub systems here are nothing but the locking mechanisms the headlamps the tail lamps etc and etc you should have the two wheeler mechanical layouts system engineering approach concept generation and problem solving team center nx and wis markup gdnt understanding dfx so these are all the common things what a person with around 5 to 6 years experience would generally have a 2 to 3 year experienced candidate will have at least 2 to 3 of this particular uh, expertise say for example a 2 to 3 year engineer would know how to use team center and nx would know how to work on this gdnt stack up analysis which is very very critical during assembly of the part and uh, if a person comes from this uh, production or quality background they'll know how to work on this agile methodology on the product development right and they'll have a lot of inputs on producing these components so this is their minimum level expectation this doesn't mean that you will have to satisfy all these points if you are satisfying at least half of these points then you become an eligible person to apply for this mechanical systems engineering what kind of people do you think will apply for these roles firstly the people from the production background who had worked on complete development phase is a very right person to apply for this role secondly a person who had worked on designing and developing a prop designing and developing a component what is developing here you talk with the supplier you understand the production process and you get the proto build of this particular part during design phase you would have also benchmarked with your competitors and then developed this particular component see a person who had designed and developed a particular piece it could be steel most probably it could be plastic the second best probability if you had developed a steel component or a plastic component it need not even be a two wheeler right it could be a four wheeler component it could be a heavy vehicle component if you had worked on those particular items you would be another possible candidate for you to apply on this particular role again they are looking out for people who has 6 to 9 years of experience and when they have the 6 to 9 years of experience window we are talking about a salary band between 10 to 15 lakhs depending upon what you are drawing currently so you should at least start from 8 lakhs to and go up up to 14 or 15 lakhs that is what i at least anticipate and if at all i recruit for this role i would at least expect if i have four openings here or three openings here i would at least expect one person who has this design skills when i say design skills i am talking about understanding the material understanding the tool very well and knowing how to approach on designing a component and i would have another person who has this quality background who had worked on solving a lot of quality concerns who knows 
who has a lot of exposures on root cause analysis and another person who has a mixed experience of both this design and the development would be the right choice for me to have shortlisted if I am recruiting for this particular role. On that note, if you don't fall on any of these categories, how could Skilling help you develop these particular skill sets? Here at Skilling, we have developed a particular program called Postgraduate Program in CAT, where you will be designing and developing multiple components of different materials. Say for example, sheet metals and plastics more in common. I know for the fact that people will not disagree if I say 85% of automotive components are generally plastics or metals, right? So on that note, if you have this expertise on designing and developing a plastic component or designing and developing a sheet metal component, there is nothing better than that. You can already start applying for these roles. But how should you study these particular courseworks? These courseworks should be studied in a way that you perform a lot of projects. A lot of projects is what is very, very important. And how could you do that? And that is what we would be teaching you during this postgraduate program in CAD, which is almost a nine month long program, where you will be exposed to plastic design, sheet metal design, wiring harness, yeah, and BAW fixtures, lighting and seating. Across these programs, you will be also doing multiple projects where you will develop a lot of plastic components and a lot of sheet metal components. And these projects would start from developing a very basic lower panel, lower trim panel, and it can go in more details like developing the complete door panel or the headliner of a car and more like that. Together, if you look at here, you will be exposed to more than 30 plus projects across multiple courseworks, right? Across sheet metal, plastics, GD&T, etc. And et with different types of material. To know more about this coursework, schedule a one-on-one -on -one session with my expert team. These experts would review your profile and suggest suitable projects for you to perform to get shortlisted in these kind of dream companies like Aether. Thank you.